are officially recording. Awesome. Hi, guys. <clears throat> Thanks for joining me tonight. Um, if you came to the first session a couple months ago, um, <clears throat> we've got new supplies tonight, uh, but tonight is a little relaxing paint night. Um, just to introduce myself, I'm Sarah uh, Rubenstein. I'm the co-founder of Art Snacks. Um, this is what I look like. You'll just be seeing my hands tonight. So I like to just have this little photo around. Um, I run a company called Art Snacks. It's a monthly subscription box for art supplies. This is our logo. Um, in your take home kit, you probably got a Art Snacks coupon card. So feel free to use that. I put it over here as well. You can use Bristol 10 to get 10% off your first box. Um, if you have any questions about the subscription, feel free to pop them in the comments and I will check them out as I go. Uh, we're not starting soon. We are starting now. So we don't need that anymore. Um, and if you want to follow me on Instagram, I'm at Sarah Roops. I guess I should have the Art Snacks Instagram handle too. Um, let's see. I have a little card that has our website. So artsnacks.co, but on Instagram, we're also just at Art Snacks. Pretty easy to find. Awesome. So what we are going to be using tonight, um, just supplies wise, we're going to use the red, yellow, blue set. Um, we'll probably use both of these tiny canvases. These are so cute. Um, great panels for working with acrylic. Um, not sure how many brushes you guys got, but I'm going to use uh, probably just these three tonight. Great brushes for pushing around paint. I have, this is just personal preference. I have two small glasses of water. Um, when one cup of water gets really muddy, I like to switch over to the other cleaner cup of water. So that's up to you. Um, acrylic paint is generally water-based. So we will not need a ton of water to activate the paint, um, but you know, cleaning brushes will need the water for. Off to the side here, I have paper towels, you know, the usual. And then I also have, um, so we're gonna be mixing a lot of colors today and making our own um, color wheel, sort of like our own rainbow. Um, so I have a slick surface that I'm gonna be using uh, to mix my colors on. This is actually just parchment paper. You can use uh, a paper plate. You can use, um, I mean, you can use a ceramic plate if you want. Acrylic paint does come off with soap and water. So um, just some sort of palette that you can really mix all the colors with. So um, that's what I'm gonna be using tonight. Um, and I'm just gonna shake these up a little bit. Sometimes acrylic can be finicky. It's very different from watercolor. So um, what we're gonna do, I'm gonna put this off to the side. Small guy, it's gonna go off camera. I'm just gonna open the paints. Um, what I like to do first um, is to sort of like get to know the paint. So we're gonna swatch them out. Um, and I hope that you are ready to get a little messy because acrylic paint can be messy sometimes. Um, I'm just gonna open one of these whites. Okay, so far so good. I'm gonna take one piece of paper here. So um, what's great about color, um, working with color is that when you mix colors, you make so many different colors um, just by mixing the pigments together they start turning into different colors. So um, we've got our primary colors, which is blue, yellow, and red. And when you mix them, you create secondary colors, which are orange, green, and violet. So we've got our red here already. Um, so we're going to make orange, which, be, which would be red plus yellow. So just take a little bit of red, With the slick surface, it's not gonna seep into the parchment paper. So that is a plus. All right, so I'm just putting a little bit out there. Sorry, I'm a lefty. <laughs> I'm gonna move my water a little bit so I can have the screen. 
we're going to bring some yellow on here and just literally put it like right on top. Um, don't worry about getting yellow. I mean, getting red inside the yellow container. Just put it right on top. Sometimes I like to twist it. And once it's on there, you can just start mixing it together. And eventually you will see the orange, which is one of our secondary colors. Awesome. So moving right along here, I'm going to swatch out the orange on here, just so you guys can see. You can also see that acrylic is like very opaque. You cannot see through acrylic. Um, and usually acrylic is really great to layer. So you could put this orange on here, let it dry, and then put like a blue on top and it'll be like a solid color right on top. So we've got our orange. I'm gonna clean off this brush. Then we're going to create, well, actually let's take some red just so we have it up here. Our first block, sorry about that. We wanna go in color order here. So we've got red, we got orange. Next in line is yellow. So we'll put a little yellow block there. Yellow. Okay, so you can see that it's sort of like orange yellow on there. That is okay because once it dries, we can put another layer of yellow on top. All right, cleaning our brushes. Um, the next color here that we're gonna create is green. And green is um, yellow plus blue. This is the only kind of math that I truly enjoy. Other than that, I am just atrocious at math. <laughs> Dabbing in some blue and I'm just gonna mix. I don't remember what I was doing, uh, where I was yesterday, but someone told me that artists are magicians because you know if they don't have something, they can just make it. Um, and I think mixing colors is a perfect example of how artists can just be magicians, just making colors. So we've got a beautiful green here. I'm actually very happy with that. I'm gonna add my next block here. I'm very happy with this green. It's like um, like a grass green. Um, I'm gonna put a blue block on there next. Um, I don't have too much room, but just know that there are two more colors that we're adding to this. It's gonna be blue and violet. So I'm gonna make it, this guy, this blue, I'm gonna make a little bit smaller. So you've probably heard of the color wheel. Um, I think the color wheel is a great tool when it comes to picking colors and mixing colors and really just understanding color theory. Um, I don't think it has to be in a wheel every single time, um, but I think it's just very well known as the color wheel. So um, to make violet, our last color is uh, blue and red. So I'm gonna scoop some blue, put them up here. Um, this can be uh, a, a difficult one to manage because sometimes if you add like too much red or too much blue, it just looks like brown. Um, so just be careful. I remember when I was a kid, I used to just be like, oh, what does it look like if I put all the colors together? And then you get like brown or black usually. So I just put a dab of, red and I don't, I'm not sure if it looks 
great on screen, but I have a beautiful violet color here. So let's, I'm gonna put it on the white, you'll see. It's pretty awesome. Cool, okay. So here is our color wheel. We've got primary and secondary colors. Check them out, check them out. It's pretty good. Um, I'm just gonna add a little bit over the yellow because I don't want it to come across as like an orange yellow. So I'm just gonna add another layer. It's probably dry by now. I'm just sort of like dabbing a little bit. Awesome. All right, so that looks much better. Um, if it looks weird on screen, I apologize, but in person, it's much more yellow. So those are the colors that we've got and we'll be working with tonight. Um, I'm gonna leave uh, this the way it is on the parchment paper. Um, I may go back and add like more red and more blue to the purple in order to actually make way more purple. Um, so what we're gonna do next, now that we've swatched these, is we're gonna make um, what's called analogous colors. Analogous colors are the colors that sort of sit next to each other on the color wheel. So between, for example, uh, between yellow and green, there's a spectrum of yellows that turn into greens. So um, it's better to demonstrate it actually <laughs> than to just like say it like that. So here's what we're gonna do. This is where um, your your one-to-one -one balance comes a little bit um, imbalanced. So we've got green. I'm gonna put another block of green here. I apologize for my upstairs neighbors, if you can hear them. <laughs> Their living room is above my studio and they like to work out in the evenings, so. If you hear any music or people yelling, it's a workout class, maybe a Peloton, I don't know. So we've got our green here and what we're gonna do is we're gonna turn this green gradually into yellow. So what I want you to do is pull a little bit green down here, I'm switching to this water. And we're gonna add a little bit more yellow to this green pile. So see, we made like a little bit more of like a lime green. It's slowly transitioning into yellow. It, it, it may take a few colors to get there, but we can do it relatively quick here. I'll give you a close up. So we're going from the green, we're gonna add a little bit more yellow. So it goes from like grass green to lime green. Now this I think is gonna be way more like yellow, yellow green because it has way more yellow in it. And I'm gonna do one more dab of yellow. This one now is primarily yellow, I think. Also notice that I did not clean off my brush in between. I'm just sort of building on top of the colors that are on my brush. Now I'm gonna clean off my brush because the last square I'm gonna use is just yellow. And those are analogous colors. 
they sit next to each other in between on the color spectrum. Ta -da. <laughs> um, so another buzzword that we can use here is temperature. Um, generally, these three colors, red, orange, yellow, you've probably heard are warm colors. Um, and green, blue, and violet are cooler colors because of their temperature. Um, so what's great about doing analogous green to yellow is that you go from a cool color here straight into the warm colors and just seeing that progression. So um, it's very pretty. Uh, some people may also blend these together. So it's more of like a gradient or an ombre. I mean, I think ombre is more of like a, a hair term, a grooming term. Gradient is like a Photoshop term. <laughs> um, I don't know which one is correct or if they're both correct, but regardless, um, this, uh, these analogous colors um, are just fine the way they are. They don't have to be blended in like that. Awesome. So um, these are the swatching techniques that I wanted to show you guys, the color mixing techniques. Um, so what we're gonna do is um, a little project. Um, I have an apple here. Um, this is a Fuji apple, still ripe, hasn't gotten bad yet. Um, and I think the best way to study color mixing is to do um, is to paint fruits. Fruits are, you know, beautiful colors and have a spectrum of colors within them. So when you look at the Fuji apple, we've got some green, there's some yellow, it blends into red, there could be some orange there. Who knows? Um, this side is completely like yellow, orange, and green. Um, so if you have something on your desk or in your kitchen that you want to paint with some basic colors that you can find on the color wheel, um, grab it and I'm gonna have this one, uh, this apple sit off screen over here. Um, and I'm gonna put it in a spot where I'm gonna have it uh, facing me like this. So I'm gonna focus in on um, the apple spot right here because I think I can make all of these colors. So I'm just gonna put them off to the side here. Um, I'm gonna put this off to the side as well, but I'm gonna keep it handy because it's gonna be like my, uh, my reference guide essentially. And I'm gonna bring in this little guy. I'm gonna put my apple right on here. Now there's a few different ways that we can do this. Um, with acrylic painting, um, it is okay to draw out what you want to create um, because um, acrylic paint is opaque. It'll cover up your pencil marks. That is actually, I think I'm going to do that. Let me just grab a pencil real quick. Um, so I'm gonna draw out my apple. You don't have to draw out the apple. Um, if you think you've got a handle on um, brush control on you know, making a circle, um, totally fine. It's up to you and your comfort level. So I'm just gonna uh, gently on here, draw what I see. And honestly, it is just a round apple. I'm gonna just gently outline the outside. And then in the middle here, I'm doing it super lightly. I'll bring it closer. I'm doing it super lightly just so I have like the basic idea of where it is. And then like sort of over here, I've got like a stem. Um, and I also want to plot out where the col like the major colors are. So I've got like a green. The green is over here. And then it starts to get dark around where the stem is. I've got some more patches of green over here. So this is like a basic anatomy of like where I wanna be focusing my colors on. So I've got a lot of green right here. 
Um, it gets like a darker green in here. And then I wanna say there's like a lot of green here. Boop. All right, it looks super weird. Um, don't worry if you can't figure out how to uh, map out your apple <laughs> or your fruit. Um, I, I recommend bananas. I don't have a banana on me, but bananas are pretty easy to map out because it's just yellow and brown and then different colors in between. Um, so I'm gonna start with this. I'm gonna go for a bigger brush. I'm just gonna adjust my seat. Um, and I really won't be focusing much on like the purples or the dark colors, um, but I will be focusing on yellow. I'll probably bring some white in too, and then a dab, barely a dab of black at the end. So for now, I am going to focus on red. I'm gonna drag in a slight amount of orange, just a little bit. And I'm just gonna go ahead and find where the deepest red parts are. Now I'm doing, I only have, let's see, oh, we're at about like a little over a half hour left. So this is the accelerated version of painting this, but you know, when you go into an art museum and you see all those like oil paintings, those take a very long time. So normally when you are doing something like this, you have to really take your time. But this is going to be the quick version. Now it really doesn't look like anything right now, um, but that's because I don't have all my colors in. Grabbing some more red, a little bit of orange. I'm gonna add a little bit of yellow green. I'm just sort of building up and blending in over here because this spot is gonna be a lot of yellow green. And I think I emphasized this before, but acrylic is great for layering. So it is okay to go on top. I'm realizing that I wanna scoop up more of this color. Just sort of dabbing it on. I know it looks a mess, <laughs> but that's okay. It's gonna come together when you get more colors on there. Um, also brush technique. I notice that I'm not like doing long paint strokes. I'm almost like just dabbing in the color where I feel like the color needs to sit. Um, I'm gonna have to make, I'm gonna grab another brush and make some more yellow green. So I've got the green established here already. I'm just sort of adding yellow into it. I'm gonna put this guy down there for now because I'm gonna need him. Really focusing in on just getting the color down and then we can talk about details later. So I'm approaching an area where there is a lot of green. So I'm making sure that green is sort of like budding up next to it because I'm gonna blend it into green. This is a big spot of green too. So I'm making sure that there is 
some blending happening there. Oh my gosh. Okay, so sometimes you will experience something going outside of the lines. No worries. I'm just gonna sort of like pull it back in. Clean off my brush. Um, do not worry if you do not get this on the first try. This is hard. Um, this is something that people practice. Artists practice this stuff all the time. Um, you'll see, I mean, on Instagram, there are people that just like draw and paint the same thing over and over again and just iterate until they feel like they've mastered the technique. Because sometimes doing this stuff is just like all about technique. So just make sure that you're blending, you're layering, you're thinking about what color goes next to each one. And we'll take it from there. So I feel like I have really put in a lot of my red spots. A lot of what's over here is gonna be green, but I'm just gonna put this in now, just a little bit. Again, layering is happening, is gonna happen. So I'm gonna layer yellow green on top of that. But I'm just sort of like making some curves here, some motions here. So you can tell that this is, this object is round. How are we looking? How's everyone else is looking? <laughs> I bet they're looking pretty good. Okay. Just adding little teeny tiny dabs. I know this is like a bigger brush for what I am doing at the moment, but not bad. Okay, so now I'm gonna focus in on adding more yellow. I'm going to save that brush because I'm going to use him for details. Now I've got this big spot. I'm actually very excited about this big spot because I'm just going to make them green and work on blending in the red. Um, one great thing about acrylic is that it also dries pretty fast. So there's a good chance that by the time you're ready to put on your next layer, the layer below it is dried. So that is definitely a plus. I'm feeling a little rusty today. I have been focusing more on like markers and colored pencils. So the acrylic has me really uh, thrown me for a loop here. So bear with me, it'll all come together in the end. <laughs> but even if you want to, when you finish yours, um, Give it a day, let it sit and dry completely, and then go back in with more layers. Find where you can add more detail. I'm gonna switch brush brushes for a moment so I can use this guy. He's a little bit smaller. I wanna add in some more detail. Another good tip, it is okay to just move this around. Adding a little bit more dark green because it does get darker where the stem is sticking out of. Really looking at where the light is hitting. We'll talk about light later because when you look at something, sometimes where the light is hitting, the brightest spot, sometimes it, it's like white. You know what I mean? Like I'm gonna 
move my object here. See how my light source is coming from over here and it's hitting this spot on the apple, this like ring, and it's a white, white-ish ring. We can paint that in too. So that's gonna be key, but that's gonna come at the end when everything is like relatively dry. Another tip is to start adding some motion here. We know that an apple is round, so we want to make it look like an apple is round. So I am just painting along as if it is curvy. brush you're in the way great example of layering I've got the green going right on top of the red Picking up some more color. I might have to make some more green soon. Yeah, let's make some more green. So um, green is our handy dandy math equation, blue and yellow. Just a scoop. Sorry, I don't have any music on tonight, guys. I usually have music, but we're having some sound. Uh, we had a sound situation, so I don't want to have to compete with it. So next time. All right, so I've got my limey green here. Going back in here. This area is pretty dry. I'm sort of just like dabbing it in. It's like a, I mean, it's technically a ripe apple, but sometimes when green apples need to turn into yellow, they're like half ripe. Also notice that my pencil is completely covered up. Gonna make some more of this and add more yellow. Got a little stand here and my my brush keeps hitting it. Sorry guys. All right, so I am covering up as much white as I can here. Let's take a look here. We're gonna make sure to add in some red because we've got some red lines here. It's funny here, it is like, trying to position it in a way for you to see how I'm painting it. I'm painting it like that. So we have a lot more, oh boy, we have a lot more yellow that we need to put in here, maybe even a little bit of orange, which I've sort of started over here. Um, but again, it's a lot of layering. It's a lot of um, patience here. Um, so we're just gonna keep on keeping on. I'm sort of just dabbing this in more. I'm gonna clean this brush off and I'm gonna go back to the red. Um, so I'm gonna add a lot of yellow, just like a, whoop, just a swipe of yellow to my reds. Thinking about that orange now, it's a little bit darker. Um, I'm going to experiment a little and add a little bit of violet. Ooh, risky, I know. But now we've got like a dark orange over here. It's almost like some purple undertones. 
And I'm gonna start making streaks like this so you can tell that it is round. Let's see, I need to make some more. Uh, let's do this. When you guys finish yours, I would love to see it. Um, so if you put it like in your Instagram story or whatever, you can tag me at Sarah Rubes. Love to see how your final piece came out because I have a feeling these aren't going to be done by the time this uh, class is over. So I encourage you to keep trying and trying it again. Um, I think we have another class coming up in a few weeks. Um, so at that point, we'll be doing some other fun painting uh, with acrylics. But this month, it's all about fruits. Okay, so see how I'm adding that color? It's sort of making it look darker where the light is not shining. Sort of making it round, which is what we want. Other parts that are round and on a darker side is right over here. So I'm going to add more over there. And try and follow these lines, these directional lines, so they know that it is round. Gonna make some more. I get so nervous every time I dip my yellow brush into a purple, and then just, you know, you just gotta hope for the best sometimes that the color that you want comes out. Um, I will absolutely post my final piece as well. Um, I may, I may do my final piece tomorrow, but I'm going to try and get as much done now as I can. So I've got another really dark spot over here. It's where the red is. So I'm just going to lightly put some lines here. I'm adding a little bit of water to my acrylic. Um, it is, this is definitely not, it definitely doesn't have the properties of watercolor, but it will get a pigment, water will get pigment off of your brush. So I just want to do that. I'm sort of adding this in here. I wanna do more red orange. So I'm gonna clean off my brush. Bring more red down here. And some yellow. Oh, did you guys hear that? We've got snow happening here right, right now, live, live snowing. So the plows are out. All right, so I am just, again, working with the directions. We want you to know, we want the viewer to know that the apple is round. So I am just lightly brushing in the direction of what would make an apple look round. So I'm loving what's happening here. I'm gonna keep going on top of this green because the apple so beautifully blended itself. And now I'm just trying to replicate that. It truly is 
so amazing to see like things ripen while they're still on the tree. They go through like all these different color stages. It's really quite amazing. Science is pretty cool. <laughs> uh, okay, so I wanna add, let's add some green. Let's see what, what will happen there. Drawing some lines. Um, I'm almost making like my own texture. I'm just layering it on top. Cool. What time are we at? Oh, great. So we've got like 15 more minutes. Oop. Turn this a little bit. Now I'm gonna switch brushes. I'm gonna go back to my green yellow mixture and go start doing some more layering. So I'm gonna make some more. Need a scoop of blue. See where that takes me. Uh, it's pretty dark. I think I need a lot more yellow. Okay. So what we're going to do is I'm going to start blending in over here. Now it's really starting to look round, which is what I want. And I've sort of made a pinpoint here so you can see this is where I'm gonna place my stem. And now I have like a little bit of yellow left. I'm gonna just go straight in with yellow, I think. Let's see what, where that takes me. Going in guys. getting much brighter. Oh, I'm taking the yellow from the lid actually. <laughs> much easier. So if this is your first time making a fruit, I haven't painted a fruit in years, literal years. <laughs> Um, which is why I'm feeling a little rusty. So um, it will absolutely take time. I don't expect you to nail this on the first try. If you do, amazing. I want to see it. <laughs> um, what's the best thing about making art is that you just keep doing it and doing it until you perfect it. Um, and it sometimes comes out different. Actually, it does come out different every single time, unless you're like photocopying it. So I like that I added the yellow. So I'm just sort of blending the yellow in a little bit more here. Trying to make it less strawberry looking and more apple looking. <laughs> but because I've got that red as the base, my layer, I'm very happy with the way that it's coming out. It's sometimes more fun to work with color when it comes to like drawing fruits and stuff like that because you get to have more flexibility. If you're drawing fruit with like charcoal and pencil, you're really like stuck with just like gray tones. This is way more fun. Cool. 
we've come a long way. Let's see. So sort of just like, it's like that. I think that's the view right there. Um, feeling pretty good about the where it is now. Let's add a few small details. I've got this stem that's like a very dark brownish color. So I'm going to put that in. I'm just cleaning off my brushes here, guys. Give me one moment. Cool, got a clean brush. So I'm not gonna use black. Um, I'm gonna use the other colors in order to achieve, um, to achieve the stem color that I want. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make purple again. It's because I think that'd be like a good base tone or like violet. I don't, I don't know, I don't remember what I called it the first time. <laughs> um, so we've got violet. I'm gonna add a lot more blue because I want it to be much darker. All right, big blob of blue coming in, coming in hot. And honestly, use this time to experiment too. Um, now that I've got this like blue red, I'm, I think I'm gonna add like a dab of blue, of black, sorry. I want it to be a little bit darker. Literally a dab, I just like poked the black. So I'm adding that in there. It's almost making like a muted color now. I think that's good though. So um, I am just going to gently add a tiny little I think that's it <laughs> we just made that entire color just to do that one little line yeah I don't want to add any more in fact I'm going to go over it with probably like the red yellow um yeah I don't want to add any more to that because I feel like I might ruin it <laughs> So I'm gonna keep that where it is right now. I'm gonna let it dry, this little stem. He's gonna dry for a little bit. Um, and then I'm gonna add, let's see, a little green blue to this concoction over here because there is a slight shadow. There is a slight shadow surrounding the stem. So here's what we're gonna do. Here's where the focus comes in. Just going to add that shadow around the stem. Just so it looks, because it's going in, I want it to show that it's going in. I'm just going to turn this. There we go. Sometimes you get you just get so into something that you just like stop talking. So sorry guys. <laughs> um, I also just didn't want to mess up. Watercolor you can easily move around with water. Acrylic, not so much. A little bit more uh, permanent. All right, how's that look? Um, so it's drying very quickly. I'm just going to add. Uh, I'm blind this color right here. Pick up some of this color and just do a little bit on the outside here. It's a little too, too much, like ever so slightly. All right, so when you focus in on the stem here, you know that it is it like an indent into the apple. So the last thing we're gonna do, finish up here, is find the light source. So find the light source on your um, item here. If I am painting this direction right here, I've got this like white light here. It's almost white. It's like a like slightly white. There's some, ooh, 
There's some over here too. So I'm just gonna grab a tiny bit of white and I'm just gonna dab it on where I think the light source is hitting. And this is like the smallest amount of white because you know what, we're gonna go in on top of it with the green. There's a little bit of the light source here. And a little bit of the light source here. See, I kind of, I want to achieve this color. See how it's like very blended in. So I'm just sort of like pushing it around a little bit. Cool. It just shows that your apple is a little shiny, you know? If you can see the light source, that means there is some sort of shine or shimmer to it. Um, the item that you're painting is not absorbing that light. It is sitting on top. So I'm just sort of um, bringing in some more of that green. still going along with making sure that it translates as a round object. I don't like this giant yellow, <laughs> this giant yellow like swatch that I made over here. So uh, how do I cover that up? Let's cover it up with a little bit of like red green. There we go. Again, best thing about acrylic is that you can layer. So much easier to layer. If you really wanna get into layering, give oil paints a shot. That'll really teach you a lesson in layering because that stuff, once it dries, it does not move. Just gonna add a little bit here on top. How are we doing on time? Ooh, we're almost, drawing to a close, pun intended. This has been so fun. If you guys have any questions, please leave them in the, um, the chat box. I will look at them in a moment. Um, I think also just for being on this live class today, um, you'll be entered into a drawing to win a free art snacks box. Um, I'm not sure if that was mentioned um, by if Bristol mentioned it or if Mike mentioned it on here. Um, just for showing up, you get entered into a raffle. So thank you for showing up, guys. This is just perfect. Awesome. So let's take another look at the apple. I notice how I didn't do this like line situation. So it's more like here. Not bad, not too, too bad. Not the same, it's not very literal. This is my interpretation of it. It didn't come out too bad. It does translate as an apple. When you take the apple away, you're like, oh, look, that's an apple. Um, so it needs maybe like half hour to an hour to dry completely. Um, if you're feeling fancy, you can go in with another layer of paint just to really make sure your colors are blending. Um, I don't know about your set, but my set came with this amazing little easel. So I'm gonna like sit him up to dry. It's like my little pride and joy, my little apple. Um, I'm curious what you guys created. So definitely make sure to, I'm gonna post mine on Instagram um, in my story. So make sure you tag me. I'd love to see what you made. Um, but let's also look at what else we did today. We made, um, well, it's not a color wheel. Sorry, guys. <laughs> it's a color line um, where we were able to mix and blend colors in order to achieve a full rainbow there. Um, and then we also learned analogous colors. Analogous colors are the colors that 
um, are next to each other in the color wheel. So in order to get from green to yellow, you've got to go through this spectrum of colors um, to achieve that. So um, this has been amazing. Um, I've got this beautiful little apple here and my little color sheet. Um, if you have any questions, again, you can find me at Instagram. Um, and if you're looking to subscribe to Art Snacks, the monthly subscription box for art supplies, make sure you go to artsnacks.co, check us out um, and use your code BRISTOL10 in order to get 10% off your first box. If you sign up, uh, what's today, February? If you sign up today, you'll get the March box, which is shipping out next month. Um, so thanks so much for having me. This was so fun. I'm so glad that we got to do this. Um, and I hope everyone's doing well, staying warm. And um, yeah, thanks for your time, everyone. I hope uh, you have a great rest of your week. Yay. Thanks for the